Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, Tim Burgess. So Tim, so you wrote a book. Mm -hmm. So what do you, you like about the book? How do you decide which bits you like to put in, which bits you like to leave out? What did you? Um, yeah, I was asked to write a book. Um, I didn't really think of writing one, uh, but I, I enjoyed uh, the idea. And um, just pretty much uh, I start, you know, I started um, after a long shower to store and um, just locked myself away for a, for a little bit and um, used a tape recorder and just kind of spoke into it with some friends who were wanting to know about that's the end of it, that's how, uh, how it started and I was, a, was, it, was it not so much a book you started off with? No, just I, I, memories. yeah, memories yeah. really and, and then, um, you know, and, and, and then it, I, came, I came back from this uh, holiday in, in Wales um, with about 20 hours worth of um, me talking into, into my phone and, uh, and I started tapping it off and then I started dreaming and went off on tangents and stuff like that and you know, I started remembering so sort of things started coming back. Yeah. So when you start to do memories of the Hacienda, mm. is that stuff like, I mean, I remember each of you once, you said like, I used to walk home. Yeah. Which is a bit, it's almost talk about the you, what you used to walk back. You walked walk back to my mum's house in, uh, in North, which, which was... Um, 50. Miles. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was a long way to go, but you know, I mean, it was, it was pretty boring walks back. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and then it was worth it, you know, just to, you know, I don't know, just to talk about music and all that, really. Yes, yeah, so, so when you wrote the book, it's, it's, it's quite a difficult story, Charles. It's not a, yeah. it's, it's a lot of bad things happen, a lot of good things happen. So yeah. was, it, was it quite painful to write? It wasn't. Uh, pay for it all to write, I don't think. Um, you know, I mean, I, I enjoyed writing it, um, and I lived it, you know, I lived the book uh, every day for a year, uh, you know, it's all I thought about. Um, it wasn't really painful or cathartic, and people, everyone asked me, what, you know, that, that, that word, you know, was it cathartic writing it? And it, just, it, it was just something that I enjoyed doing, uh, like, it, you know, when, when you make an album, um, it's your life, and you, you just, you wake up every morning and, and that's what you do. And it was the same for me with the book, really. Um, just, just once I got into it, there was you no know, stopping me around. So. Yeah, so, so what would you look back on your life? What did you think of it? Was, you know, what did you um, think, think, wow, that was quite lucky to get the <laughs> so, yeah, so well, that was a, um, well, was a, a bit of an escape when my, uh, a couple of my friends got, um, they got into a fight with the, the neighbouring village um, and uh, there was a stabbing and this, this you know, kid got hurt and a couple of guys went to prison and, and I thought that was a really lucky escape, that was my first escape, I thought. And, uh, right, well, were you actually there? Or you no, I, 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 I just didn't go that one time and, and I just felt that someone was looking out for me and I thought I'd better get a guitar. And there's, a, and there's a lot of music obviously in the book. Yeah, it's all about it. Because you're like a musical obsessive. Oh, yeah. And I was actually sitting there thinking you should actually be on that. Yeah, well, it was then, yeah. Said, didn't I? yeah. Then what was the music that you first got obsessed by? Um, basically, Rollers and uh, uh, Slade. Really. Uh, they were the first bands that I had pictures of, 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 pictures of on my wall. Um, and it kind of. One th Thursday evening, uh, I saw the vibrators on, on, on the TV and um, I thought of myself as a, as a punk from that day on. It was so you're about 78. About 11? Yeah, yeah, about 11. Two young. Yes, as a, uh, yeah, a, young, a young punk. And, uh, and th there was a, a punk um, disco, uh, or this is a, you know, uh, in, in, in Northwich where I grew up. And I suppose it's just like representing the times really, but uh, I used to go there and um, that's a pretty, pretty interesting time. So. You actually had a punk disco in North Well, I think it was a disco, but I, I was a punk, so. Oh, yeah, so they played two punk Yeah, 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 they played that, yeah, yeah. So, it's kind of, it's, yeah, it's, very, it's, you know, a lot of great music, you know, but, um, whether it's, obviously, it's not classed as 
punk, but I do remember like you know Black Sabbath, Paranoid, and Adam and the Ants, and Kings of Wild Frontier, you know, mixed in with I don't know, I guess also I still love the vibrators. So it's so because you're only 12, so at that point in time, it's, it's just like a massive rush of culture. You, yeah. I guess you can't tell which one's which, can you? No. It just all sounds good. It all sounds good. Yeah. But but you start to, even when you're 13, you start to like pick and choose. Like it. it's it's quite advanced for your music taste because you. <laughs> At the time, because you're a massive craftsman. Well, uh, someone put a craftsman in, in, in Winsford. Uh, yeah, I just, yeah. Um, uh, and I, I saw a documentary, not a documentary, but um, Steve Dickerman was on uh, YouTube, and he was talking about this gig in Winsford, and I, I remember talking to Penny Rimbaud about it um, as well, and, and he, he said that he enjoyed that. He did a, a tour and ended up in the North West, and that was his favourite one, because he played in Manchester the night after, and it was just like really, really good. Uh, uh, grubby and the Winsford one was just full of like you know young kids who all went with like um, you know knitted crash jumpers and stuff like that and uh, went with the mums and dads and it's like I, I, I was I was at that one so it's kind of fun. Had you ever heard them before? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, my, my, my friend Gary Ollier, who's it, is actually in the book. Um, he's the first person who who, who um, said that Sex Pistols are old hat and it's all about this band called Crass and the had Reality Asylum, but uh, I didn't. Get onto it until I got the Honey Bane um, single as the first one, and then Bloody Revelations after that. So for a thirteen-year-old to give like that, that's quite extreme drop. I mean, what was what was the experience like? Uh, I was just uh, nervous because uh, I wanted to speak to people. Yeah. Quite badly. <laughs> and, uh, did you? No, and uh, uh, Andy Palmer was the uh, one who opened up, so I like, shouted stuff out and then running away. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, just, that was, uh, that was so, so from that point you, you had a little punk phase, but then you start getting, is it Joy Vision New Work? Joy Vision, a new order wasn't until I left school really, so uh, it, was, um, it was all about punk. And I suppose we could reflect in the times as well, uh, uh, I would imagine two-tone was quite a big thing, but I remember getting you know, into exploited by Dogs of War when it, when it was in school and stuff like that. That was like what we'd get at Lords. You know, yeah, she dressed up like Little Punk as well. Uh, it's weird to say it really. I mean, I was sort of, um, uh, I don't know, I'm, you know, I just was a skinhead, I suppose. Just the easiest version. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and flares. But what was it like growing, growing up in Norfolk? Because it's, mm. it's detached from Manchester. So there's a sense that you're just missing the party, it's just up the road. Well, as soon as I could, um, I would. I mean, I would always get the train and you know go to the underground market and, 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 uh, on Market Street and uh, the Andel Centre, and uh, I would probably go there from about that age, about thirteen. You know, so get the train from Northwich and then Just get to Manchester. Down. Yeah, and uh, I suppose that Manchester's always can, well, it's, it's kind of in between. I suppose it's in between. Yeah. North, which is in between Liverpool and Manchester, I suppose, isn't it? No, so, so you go to Liverpool much as well? Not really, no. It's kind of like, I think there's a lot of people in North, which you, you know, went to Liverpool and I you know, always ended up going to Manchester, really. Because you, you're actually, your parents from Manchester? Yeah, from yeah, South yeah. South yeah. South yeah. South yeah. South Dad's from South, South but mum's from Bol Bolton. So do you feel more attached because of that? I think so, yeah, because I was, cause I was born here yeah, and my grandma lived there. Uh, kind of, you know, always felt that, you know, it's, just happened every week, I was, I was in Manchester every week from when I was a kid. So was there any sense that there was a music scene in the city then that you would know about? And obviously there was one, but would you, would you have it filtered down to 13, 14 year olds? Not, not really. I, I didn't really realise much about the, the Manchester scene until Tommy Wilson, I uh, started to recognise Tommy Wilson on the, on the TV. And, um, you know, a lot of the bands that, he, that, that were on you know, on his show, I suppose they, they weren't necessarily much as bad. I remember the Human League being on, and uh, I remember the Fall doing, uh, I think it was listening to the studio, I think they, they, they did it on his show. But then that, that's when I started to be aware of, of Manchester bands and, and thinking that there's something that they had that, you know, could be, you know I didn't see anywhere else really. So was this about the time when Tony actually gave you a factory badge? Um, well, it was Alan Erasmus who gave my mum a factory badge because she worked in a, in a news agent. And uh, she would talk to him all, all the time about music because I was, you know, really obviously into it. And um, Alan 
and, and Tony wasn't used to going to talk to my mum. And then uh, Alan pulled out his change to make a buy, buy his paper and there's no fact that you want much in there. And that was kind of the start of, uh, you know, my mum brought it home. And um, it was kind of like she didn't realise that it was like the greatest thing that she should ever bring home to me, you know what I mean? You know, because I've been reading about it. And, yeah, just, it was like the greatest thing ever. I mean, did you know, was it, was this point time not changing the order? Or was this the way yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit blurred, but... Um, so, but you just got the whole faction thing? Yeah, because I, I remember he, he definitely, uh, a couple of, um, you know, maybe months after that, um, I got a white label of Confusion and a couple of Jersey Collin records, um, which you know, just blew my mind really. So remember we talked about this before, and you said about it's, it's, as much as you love your order, you also mm. really like to order the Balance of Factory. Yeah, well. yeah. Because we don't often talk about it, the Balance of Factory, there's some really great hidden yeah. gems there, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Section 25 uh, from Blackpool, uh, Stuff on Monsters, Jersey Collin, The Wake, uh, you know. It's, I liked, I liked everything really. I thought everything was, um, you know, at least in, interesting, and, and I didn't wasn't aware of any of the labels that you know supported bands like the Factory did, you know, and, and um, it all seemed to be based around Tony Wilson's kind of idea. And I, 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 I was probably more interested in Tony Wilson in a, in a way than I was. But, you know, I didn't really know that they you know playing out of the and. New Order didn't really come across as having a front man. It always seemed like it was Tony Wilson. You know, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because he was always a profile. Yeah, man. yeah. And, and uh, yeah. you know, I was I thought that it was really cool that New Order never really spoke or didn't seem to sort of say anything, and they were more kind of aloof. And I thought that was I thought that was pretty cool. So at this point, in time, was the, was the record shop open at this point? In time? Was Steve Harris having shop? Because um, he used to hang around there at some point. Yeah, it well, was a later. At first, they had one in Winsford. And it was pretty close uh, to where um, where Crass played, um, but he was a mod, and uh, that was kind of a bit, a bit, a bit funny. And he, you know, he used to kind of um, think of, you know, because I don't know. I mean, I'm, like you say, you know, you have broad music taste. So I saw the Five Prisoners record, and uh, you know, maybe Section Twenty Five record in the same in the same go. And I didn't see anything wrong with that, but. He, but he did. He was a bit of a snob, yeah. He thought yeah. it was a bit weird. But he used to go in the shop, I remember he told me, you were just like this little kid that used to go in the shop, mm -hmm. and just keep asking to listen to every single record virtually. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> or just like complete music from that too. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, well, you know. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's. Uh, yeah, I've met a lot of people who are very similar to me, or, you know, I mean, Douglas with films and stuff, just in there. Um, you know, we were actually fanatical about things, and there wasn't anyone really at the time, but I was obviously it's very young. But you know, um, along the way, I've met a lot of people who were really, you know, obsessed by by music, and a lot of people were obsessed by a lot of stuff. You know, so, could, could you actually get into many gigs and obviously went to see Crash? <laughs> yeah, well, you, there, there's a Kevin Job gig that I went to. Uh, I think it was Cavendish Palace or Cavendish House. Yeah. Is it called? Yeah. And uh, UK Subs. I used to love UK Subs. Uh, just fantastic band. What a great, brilliant yeah. great team. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, was, I mean, it was one of the best things ever when uh, Charlotte's played um, the Town and Country Club and, and, and Charlie Harper was there. And I thought, oh, did he turn up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So it was like one of the greatest things ever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, he was the first ever fan of the Rolling Stones. I, know, I didn't know. I didn't yeah, know. when they played the Rolling Gigs, he was the only one that went to their gigs when oh, they started. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's got a really cool backstory. Anyway, right, and he's a bit of a penny rimbo, really, looks as well. So. Yeah, yeah, well, they were the band that all the other punk bands didn't fall out with. Right, okay. Because Charlie's a nice guy, right. punk, punk Charlie. Right, okay. Yeah, so, 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 so you, you go and see the occasional punk bands. Yeah. Was that up in Manchester? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So, is, there, is this the kind of point you decide you actually want to be in a band, or are you just quite happy? Well, it was, it was New Order, really. Um, I had, I had a, an uncle who was into bands that I, I, I liked some of them, but it was like The Who um, and uh, Jethro Tull and Hallway and bands like that. There's, some, there's bits about those bands that I thought were okay, but um, he tried to teach me a bass line by the police and, and I just wasn't having it. Um, and when I saw New Order on the TV, um, I, think it was, I think it was 83 or 84, 
And he called me up and, and, and started slagging him off, saying that they couldn't play, and I just thought that was the best thing ever, uh, because they couldn't play. And, and it was more about this otherness that they had, like a, an attitude, Tony Wilson, and the fact that they were being experimental and not quite hitting the mark every time, to me, was more interesting than, you know, being in a, like a, something a bit more regular, you know. Mm. So what's that, that point? Oh, the police, yeah. yeah. So did you decide you wanted to actually play in a band? Uh, well, I was very interested in, in, in being a band at that point. That was my like 16. Well, would that be as a single or play? No, I mean, I started off on a bass. Um, and then, the classic, yeah, the classic, classic, yeah. classic yeah. Yeah. Uh, I started off uh, trying the bass and then uh, I was in the synth band for a minute, for a minute, and I played guitar and, and uh, I ended up uh, being, a, being a singer, because there was other people who were better than me, uh, you know, but kind of working it out really. I, I didn't so have the patience for a guitar. Really. I worked in a band, but if you couldn't play it, you made you the singer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Which band was this? Is this before Electric like, Players? Yeah, no, well there's a few bands, kind of. Uh, Imaginatively called Interzone. Yeah, see what that's called. <laughs> <laughs> one, one of the bands, and uh, yeah, and then the Electric Crayon set that became Electric Crayons uh, without me even really knowing about it. But uh, yeah. I, I, like, I like being in the Electric Crayon set. Oh, do you prefer the set? Yeah, I like the set. Yeah, yeah. it's good. It's a uh, Bob Cruz on it, but that showed everybody. And, yeah. It's just um, a really great compilation album. And it's about this time when you were. Um, Playing play with that band that Steve took to see the Stone Roses, did he? Uh, I went to see the Stone Roses. Because, because the Charlotte's were playing with them, yeah, because he Charlotte's was involved with them. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think um, Steve was friendly with Gareth. Um, the Stone Roses manager. Yeah, the Stone Roses manager, because um, cause Steve had a record shop, Gareth thought that he had um, connection. <coughs> uh, and I think that the idea was that Steve got um, them gigs and the Charlotte's played with them. That was, I think that was the idea. But then uh, Shelton, the singer uh, who played guitar as well, didn't want to be in the band anymore. And um, so, and I, I, when Steve took me to see them, I thought that they were good, but the best thing about them was that they had an organ player and, and, the, and the drummer. So did he um, actually say, say he was kind of take you to see them? No, he didn't. Like, singing for them? No, he didn't, but I think that was his. That's the thing, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, I mean, it wouldn't have better that way because I think I would have, like, you know, uh, you know, it would have been, um, you know, it just wasn't forced at all. It was just a, a kind of a natural, oh, how did I get it kind of thing. <laughs> Whereas there's something, it looked like someone was having a kind of behind the scenes. Is this international in Manchester? International too, I think. Yeah. yeah. So it's quite a big gig. Yeah. So what do you think of the roses now? Uh, well, I thought uh, Ian came on another yo yo and he sounded, I thought that was pretty good. And uh, he sounded like monkeys, and my mate was a really big monkeys fan, and I thought that was fantastic. Yeah, yeah there's, there is elephants in there, sound. Yeah, and then, and then I got uh, Elephant Stone, which was produced by Hockey. Mm. So, so it was kind of making it, a lot yeah. of sense to me because, yeah. uh, you, know, uh, you know, New Order, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. So, pretty soon after that, they asked you to join the band? So. Uh, yeah. So did you have a quandary about the band you were in the year? Or was no, really. Just on a single? Yeah, just on a single. That was the only thing, because I... I, I um, Which is actually a really good single. I know you always don't seem to be happy with it. I like one of the sides, yeah. yeah. I think one of the sides was kind of... It's it's kind of a pretty good quirky kind of garage. Well, one, thing, you know? one was very me and the other one wasn't. Mm. So. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's a pretty obvious choice when the Charlottes came calling. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, it was... It just... Um, I went down for a, a, a rehearsal, um, or oh, I went down to watch them play, uh, and it's an instrumental, it was um, a song called, we, we called it Imperial 109, um, and it was a track that we always used to come on to, this, you know, the instrumental thing, and uh, I just thought it was the greatest thing I'd heard, you know. And uh, then there's two other songs, one uh, track that became Always In Mind, and another track that was called Flower. Um, and uh, I was just, you know, it just everything just felt like that my life was about to change. You know, it, it felt like I, I was in a band that could actually do, you know, like if you say, oh, we're going to do it, you know, if this music felt like we were going to, we were actually going to do it. And everyone believed in it. It seemed to happen so fast. You, you played the boardwalk, it was packed, and about a month later you in the top ten. It well, just seemed, that, that, well, it always seems quicker from the outside, I guess. We, yeah, we, we felt like we'd been waiting for all our lives, really, but um, 
I just remember um, that there seems to be this thing going on between Shallons and Northside, and it was like Northside would play the boardwalk and I'd sell it out, and then the Shallons would play it, and then we'd sell it out, and it was kind of this next generation of, of great things happening in, in Manchester. And uh, I think that there's a piece in, in the Melody Maker that was in the Paris Angels and Oz, and, uh, you know. Bob Stanley piece. Bob Stanley piece, and I think uh, even Brian Roll Taxes are included in that, and they were yeah. blades, and you know, and, and it was. It, that really, the picture of you on the terraces of Winston uh, Town? Yeah, it was a, um, a football, Whitton Albion football team. Oh, Whitton Albion. Yeah, it's not there anymore. A cold, windswept looking picture. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, it just felt like there was something happening, and, 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 and you know, it really was. Mm. It's the same going on. I mean, what was it when you went to that first rehearsal? The band's been around quite a bit of time, but they're very tight knit, or was it quite open? Or did you feel like the outsider initially? Yeah, I did definitely. Um, but you know, I was there, so no, no, I was pretty confident, and uh, I knew what I knew what the idea was really. You know, and, you know. It's just because they'd been in the union for two or three years before. Yeah, that. but um, Ma Martin and Martin wanted to sound like the prisoners. He, he wanted it to be really garage, kind of um, Hammond organ driven. And um, and the person who was, who was in the band who, who, who left wanted it to be more kind of I suppose more 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 punk in a way. And I suppose for the first time I kind of you know didn't agree that that was kind of working really because it was quite aggressive with their kind of you know the, it was the singer thought you know was very Joe Strummer, bass kind of yeah 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 and it just wasn't really working because. You know, Seem to be a different thing, happening. So, so when you were in there, it actually tied all little strands together in a way. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So when it when it all off went really when it went off pretty quick. Yeah. Obviously, the pretty exciting time yeah. in, in your life. Yeah. 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 Well, it's, it, it's the best time ever, really, because you know um, I think the rehearsal, you know, the me, me going down to see them was um, probably April or May. And then by January 1990, we put out our first single. But before that, you know, the November of, of 1989, you know, um, Boardwalk, we, we sold out the Boardwalk, and, and you know, it was, it was pretty quick. And you know, went in at number 89. Yeah. And, uh, but everyone wrote about us, it's it a fantastic thing. You know, and, and no one went into the showers then anyway, not really. Mm. Not, not at that stage, no. not that quick. Not yeah. within four weeks to get the singer. I know. You did the demo as well, the little demo. Yeah, yeah that's it. I think the demo was cool. Yeah, the demo. I remember when I went to interview and I thought, yeah. it's Steve's office. Yeah, yeah. And you were just like a little 12 year old kid sat at the desk. Yeah, and yeah. just like, and now you look nearly 15. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. I mean, how did you go through 30 years of rock and roll and you never actually aged at all? Well, it's, uh, I've been really, you know, I'm a fortunate thing. And, you know, I've been able to do what I want. But I remember from that interview, you. I thought, God, that kid looks dead young, <laughs> but you knew masses about music. Well, I was living in a record shop. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, you know, well, not much to do with that. I lived there quite a lot, you know. Yeah. yeah. But you seem to know more than the people in the shop did as well. Yeah, well, I was laughing at them because there's always like boxes of about a thousand simple minds records upstairs. You know, <laughs> no, no, I'm on it, but, and, and, uh, I would sleep on them, so it's kind of purpose for them. So, is it, is it, when it took off, it you kind of took out all out of your control, the band's control, the manager's control. It was. Just everybody really wants the band, there's no machinations, it's just a really good demo, and a really good record, and a really tight band in the right yeah. place at the right time. Was it, was it quite hard to keep hold of it all? Um, well, when we, first, when we did our first tour and the only one I know was about to come out, that's when it got uncontrollable, but it was, it was a really exciting time, you know, I mean, we didn't have many songs, we had like eight songs or something like that, and we'd play Indian Rock twice and the only one I know twice or something like that, and it was, quite, it was really funny because, you know, none of us obviously wanted to do that, but so we had, you know, and we'd write songs, you know, while we are playing live, and it just kind of from the reaction of the people in the front row, really, and it'd be like, you know, how many, how many verses there are, 
just how, you know, because it's how long you can keep people interested, I suppose, but we'd be right in it. Well, you know, New Order always told me that you could write while you were, you know, mid-gig, because you go and see them, you know, they'd always have half songs, um, with, you know, crazy titles, and, yeah. um, and uh, so we, you know, we made up uh, uh, the last three or four songs on the album, uh, just, you know, by playing in front of people. Yeah, just spot. right with the sound check. Yeah, 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 yeah. Opportunity, you not very well. Yeah. I believe you made that wrong kind of run. And then the album comes out and it's like massive album. And so, yeah. so in a sense, you looked on as being this kind of second wave of, of Manchester bands, even yeah. if you're not actually from Manchester. Yeah. Well, you are technically that kind of complex now, that's the time. Yeah, I mean, it's but really, you really actually came about selling most of the bands from the first wave, which that must be kind of odd situation. Yeah, um, it didn't feel like it, it was any, it didn't feel like it was that odd. I know, I know, I know um, you know, Manny and Bez are really pretty happy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're always like a huge band in this yeah. city, but you like from the first boardwalk gig. Yeah, yeah. There's more people that than you would have been in a like, hometown show yeah. in Northwich or for the rest of the band in the Midlands. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, you would embrace we, 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 so we, we, fast. We played um, Crew a lot, and we played Northwich a couple of times, and then we played. Midlands a couple of times, but it was always Manchester that I like, told the band. Yeah, because it just fitted, even though it didn't sound, I don't think it ever sounded like all of the bands. Right. But it just kind of fitted in, didn't it? In a, in a way, didn't it? Because it had that kind of trippy feel that everyone did to that time. I was really into the first Tom Screen record, you know, uh, Sonic Fire Groove. Mm. It's like one of the songs on our, um, one of the songs on the album is called Sonic, mm. one of them is called Flower. <laughs> You couldn't um, write a song. No, 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 no. <laughs> they've done that with the electric yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so you know, it's kind of that, and um, you know, early creation stuff. Yeah, well, that that was always a big thing in Manchester yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah. Proud was always like big influence down to this city. Yeah, definitely. So, so when when the thing got big, and then the second album was as big, was it? So was it? Was it like uh, the second album. Thing? Second album was like us. I, I don't know. It was it was a, we had a big single worldwide with Weird Al. Um, uh, but the rest of the album didn't really go down so well with uh, people. Um, uh, we thought it was great, you know, and we were we were happy with it. But it didn't go down too well, really. Uh, a couple of fans cried, uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, there's you know a lot a lot of people were you know trying to you know uh, it just didn't go down too well, you know, and it didn't do very well. I think it's, it's, it's this point that you start to see a, a steely quality to the band. I think, you know, when most bands get to that point where they have a big breakthrough, the next record doesn't do as well, we do tend to give up or panic. Right. But there just seems to be something about the shards, we just keep kept going and just bludgeoning along, you know, which is unusual, isn't it? So mm. Most people do have that panic point. Well, I, think, I think a lot of bands fight, you know, I think, uh, and, and I, think a lot of, and I think a lot of bands who stick around um, have had to go through a lot. Uh, we, we, you know, we kind of had a quite a you know a, a big rise uh, early on. I mean, um, and and then it kind of like seemed to go a bit weird. Uh, there's a, a photograph of, of um, me on the cover, not on the cover of the second album, but on the in inside sleeve, and I've got a black eye, and that's uh, through you know put a punch up with John Brooks the night before, and you know, yeah. and, uh, and uh, you know this this things like that started to. You know, cracks seem to be sort of showing them. But you know, we got rid of our first guitarist. Mark Collins came in. That's always, you know, people seem to think that as as, as, that as a you know a weakness or something like that. Really, you know, I, I think he weed it, but you know, Mark obviously turned out to be the greatest thing, really. You know, yeah, but the back goes off. The band, the band. It completely 